Here's how different F1 was at the last Chinese Grand Prix. With the Chinese Grand Prix coming up, we've decided to take a look back at the last time Formula 1 raced in China. We haven't raced there since 2019 due to cancellation because of Covid, and while it doesn't feel like it's been off the calendar for that long, the sport is very, very different to how it was back then. Let's take a short view back to the past. Changing of the guard. At the last Chinese Grand Prix, Lewis Hamilton was a five-time world champion, having won in 2008, 2014, 2015, 2017 and 2018 previously. And while he now has 103 total race victories, he had only 74 before his victory at the 2019 Chinese Grand Prix, which was his 75th. We say only as if that's not still a huge number of wins. 2019 was part of the Mercedes domination era and I'm sure people were really looking forward to a time when the grid wasn't massively dominated by one team. Yeah. Max Verstappen is now dominating the sport having won the past three titles and looking as though he's set up to win number four. He now has a total race win count of 57 putting him third on the all-time list but last time we raced in China he only had five. Yes, five wins. In 2019, Max won three races, which would seem alien to us now. We'd now be surprised if there were three races he didn't win during the season. Verstappen also didn't have a single F1 pole position before the Chinese Grand Prix in 2019, not getting his first pole until that year's Hungarian Grand Prix later in the season. He now has 36 poles to his name. Grid changes. So what about the other drivers on the grid in 2019? Well, we saw the introduction of the 2019 rookies, the beloved group of George Russell, Lando Norris and Alex Albon, who had finished Formula 2 in P1, P2 and P3 respectively. Russell made the step up to Williams, Norris to McLaren and Albon to Toro Rosso. While Lando is still at McLaren, George Russell has moved up to Mercedes. Alex Albon has had a slightly more turbulent journey. He stepped up into the Red Bull seat halfway through the 2019 season, replacing Pierre Gasly, but lost it after the 2020 season, acting instead as a test and reserve driver the following season. Of course, in 2022, he made his return to the F1 grid with Williams, and that's where he remains today. F1 world champions Sebastian Vettel and Kimi Raikkonen were still on the grid back in 2019. Kimi had made the move from Ferrari to Sauber alongside Antonio Giovinazzi, while Vettel was joined at Ferrari by young Charles Leclerc, who had stepped up from Alfa Romeo Sauber. Pierre Gasly had just made the step up to Red Bull Racing as teammate to Max Verstappen, a move that was thanks to Daniel Ricciardo making the questionable decision to move from Red Bull to Renault and line up alongside Nico Hülkenberg that season. The team we now know as Aston Martin were racing point with a lineup of Lance Stroll and Sergio Perez, while Visa Cash App RB had the much better name of Toro Rosso with a driver pairing of Alex Albon and Daniel Kvyat. Speaking of driver pairings, we have to shout out one of the most beloved driver pairings of all time, as Carlos Sainz and Lando Norris, better known as Carl Lando, were teammates at McLaren. The newbies. So what about the other drivers on the 2024 grid, such as Piastri, Sonoda, Zhou Guan Yu, Esteban Ocon, Logan Sargent, and everyone's favourite rookie, Fernando Alonso? What were they up to in 2019? Oscar Piastri was racing in the Formula Renault Euro Cup and hadn't even joined F3 yet, while Yuki Sonoda was racing in F3, and also Euro Formula Open. Esteban Ocon was having a year out on the sidelines after he was replaced at the end of 2018 at Racing Point by Lance Stroll, leaving Esti Besti as Mercedes reserve driver for the 2019 season. Zhou Guan Yu had just begun his first season in F2 and Logan Sargent had just started his F3 campaign. So where was Fernando? Well, at the time of the 2019 Chinese Grand Prix, Alonso had retired from Formula 1 the previous year and was racing in the World Endurance Championship and preparing for another crack at the Indianapolis 500. It was Fernando's attempt of becoming only the second driver in history to win the Motorsport Triple Crown, having already won the Monaco Grand Prix and the Le Mans 24 Hours. There we have it. That's how different F1 was back the last time we raced at the Chinese Grand Prix. Let us know which stat surprised you most in the comments below.